Hello and welcome to this video. So inside the Inside Bio Explorer notebook where we have this code where we prepare the data frame and we put the entry stop loss and take profit. Below there in my code anyway last time we made ourselves a quick look at a data frame which had anything that was non-zero for the signal, in other words trades. I'd like now to remove this head and brackets here and instead type 2 pickle US dollar Japanese yen h4 trades.pkl. And that should give you a file then inside the root folder, which we've worked in with every file, which simply has then all of our trades for the four hour candles. So I've made a new notebook. We're not importing Plotly. We are importing a date util inside here. So what we're going to do in here then is we're going to go in a little bit more detail and use the five minute candle timings to better simulate the strategy. The reason for that, you remember if I just go back into the notebook, is when we stepped through here, we spotted various problems using just the four hour candles. It wasn't very clear exactly what was going on and we could have either been cut out of or won too many trades. In my own experience, using the close prices in this way is good for a rough but very rough idea and is invariably extremely optimistic. So what we want to do is for each of the trades, we want to break up the candles into the close prices of the five minute candles. So essentially we're splitting them up into what should be 46 to 48, depending on times of day and things like that, candles or price points for each of these candles, which should get us a much better idea of what's going on. So I want to illustrate how we're going to do it because the timings on candles can be a little bit confusing when you're not used to it. So I'll give you an example. If you take the five minute candle at two in the morning and the four hour candle at two o'clock in the morning, well, the close price of the four hour candle is actually at six o'clock and the close price of the five minute candle is at 0205. If you want to find the five minute candle that closed at the same price as the two hour candle of the four hour, then you actually need the 0555 five minute candle, for example. So you have to be a little bit careful when you're splitting things up. So let's imagine we have some four hour candles here with the timestamps. We have an engulf here, so we're going to enter a trade somewhere where my mouse is hovering here because I didn't put a dot. And then we get the trigger for the trade on this candle here. And that in our data frame would be 10 o'clock in the morning signal is one for a buy. So in our data frame, we would have the buy signal on the 0600 candle. And then at some point during this candle here, we got the trigger to enter the trade. And then let's imagine at 2200, we got another candle that was engulfed, which means we have another signal. In this case, it's another buy but we have to close the current trade wherever it is. So whereas in the last simulation, we just took the 2.0 or the minus one, here we're going to be more accurate. We're going to take the live price and actually calculate that ratio. So exactly where we are. The question comes for this example here where the trigger has occurred in the 10 o'clock candle and the next trade has occurred on the 2200 candle is what five minute candles do we actually take? And the answer is, is that we need to take five minute candles that start from the 10 o'clock five minute candle, because we know that somewhere inside this four hour candle, we got the trigger to enter the trade, but we need to stay in the trade until the 0155 candle of the M5, because this candle here ends latest at 0155. Things actually get more complicated when you take into account a weekend here, but things will just stop and tail off. So the Friday night goes into Saturday morning and everything stops anyway, so that shouldn't be a problem. But it's this ending at 0155 that I've actually seen in people's systems be missed before. So what I'd like to do then is just write a little bit of code in this video so we can set ourselves up to start making this iteration through the five minute prices. So the first thing we're going to do in this notebook is we're going to read in the trades data frame that we've just saved. And then I'm going to declare a new variable, which is our pair. Now, of course, we're repeating lots of code all over the place. If you're an experienced programmer, you'll know that what we're doing is fairly horrifying. We're copying and pasting code again and again. Of course, we'll build this all into a self-contained uh, script that has arguments for the pair and things like this. But for now, we'll do it uh, quick and dirty just to keep up with the, uh, the analysis. And what I'd like to do now then is read in the five minute candle. So I'll type uh, df raw is equal to pd.readpickle utils.getData file name pair and the M5. What we can quickly do is just have a look at how many rows we have on this data frame by typing shape. And we've got 223,000 odd rows, which is quite a few five minute candles, certainly more than the four hour candles anyway. Now I'm going to go back into Inside Buyer Explore here and copy and paste some code, which is always a horrendous thing to do, but for the notebooks, it doesn't matter. We'll sort it out in the scripts. So I'm going to copy this section here again, where we apply this numeric. At some point later on in this course, we'll write into our Oendo API, probably a function that gets us a data frame of candles and we'll already have this processing done. So we don't need to keep repeating this. But for now, I'm just going to copy this code and paste it on top of there like so. 
and then run the conversion on the five minute candles, which takes very little time at all, which always amazes me with pandas, but they will now be numbers inside there, which is good. Next thing I'd like to do is some code that we've seen before. The times in the data frames, if you remember, are strings. So if I go back to inside bar explore, you can remember that we were seeing this very annoying long printout, which is taking up too much space of the times. Well, that's because they're strings. So it's just printing the pure string that came back from Oanda. We need to convert these now to date times so we can add and subtract times and things like that. This is code that you've seen before. So I'm going to drop this code in because I don't want you to get bored watching me type. So we'll just say that for our trades data frame, we'll convert the time. And for our raw data frame, we'll convert the time. So that was pretty quick considering the amount of rows it needed to do. Again, this is some code that later on in the course, when we start building this into scripts, we'll put this into our API probably. So we do all of this pre-processing of a data frame before uh, we get it and start using it. Otherwise things are going to become a little bit of a pain. So what we need now then is we need ideally from the trades data frame, we need a data frame that has the time of the trade. So we get the starting five minute candle and that we already have. But what we want is this last five minute candle. So where the trade is ending. So if I just look at the top row of the DF trades, we're going from trade to trade here with each of the rows. So this one here, we're going two in the morning uh, on the 4th of January to 10 o'clock on the 4th of January in 2018. So if we were getting the five minute candles, we would want to get from two o'clock in the morning, but then we would want to go to 0155 in this particular case here. So in other words, for this trade here on this row indexed by 12, we need to do 10 o'clock, the next trade's time, plus three hours, 55. So the first thing that means is we need the time that the next trade is going to start. So we're going to make a new column that gives us, and I've called it next, the time that the next trade is going to start. And now we can make another column called trade end, where we calculate when the trade is going to end. So I'll say DF trades, trade end is equal to DF trades dot next plus DT dot time delta hours equals three and minutes equals 55. And what that should do then is create us a data frame with the times that we need. So I'm just going to paste in just looking at the three columns that we have on our data frame. So what we have then is a signal at two in the morning on the January. And then the next signal is at two in the morning on the 4th of January, which means we're going to be taking five minute candles up to 0555 on the 4th. Because remember, this signal was based on the close. So it happens sometime during that candle. So we need to go up to six o'clock in the morning effectively, which is the 0550 candle finishing of the five minute candles. So the next step in the process in the future videos then is going to be simply just to loop through this data frame, take the time and the trade end, get that bunch of five minute prices, loop through them and hope that we make uh, loads of success out of it. So thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video.